station is Platt Square. Previously on Last Stop. The only way this is going to work is if we imitate each other exactly. How come you're hanging out with fat middle-aged blokes? Sounds like you both need to get your stories straight. I expect the team to pull together, to show some passion. I'll show you what you can do with your passion. Jack got fired. What the hell are we going to do now? Everything OK? Here's the thing. You got fired as well? The eventful day, right? Why don't you just go to the doctor? Well, Molly's got a point, John. I mean, we can't be the first case of something like this. I just can't think I would be treated seriously. You're not putting mustard on that, are you? You've got Jack's allergies now, Dad. Sorry, I keep forgetting. <laughs> I'm going to end up killing myself one of these days. Sorry, mate. After Amberlyn. Um, Catherine Howard. Catherine Hepburn. It can't hurt to go to the GP about this. You're both wrong. If we swap bodies, it, it's probably a mind thing. We should see someone mental. Like a brain surgeon. Maybe. Or a therapist. Like that shop near the tube station? No, I'm talking about professional therapists. Not some loony who's going to tell me my future by counting my nostril hairs. Hang on, though. Molly might be onto something there. Yeah, I might be onto something. Desperate times demand desperate measures. We shouldn't be closed off to any potential situation. Fine. Add it to the list. It says Abilin was beheaded f for a fornication. What's fornication? That's one for you, I think, Jack. Fornication? Well, it's some... It's, uh, does anyone want anything from the shop? We'll see you tonight, yeah, Mom? With any luck, we'll be back in our own bodies by dinner time. Bye, Dad. See you later, Jack. So, I've got a list. Uh, we've got an appointment with your GP, Dr. Aji Bolla, and then we're seeing that therapist I found online. Aren't you forgetting something? Yeah. Yeah, we are going to have our auras read too. I hadn't forgotten. You know, there is one good thing that you've got going for you. Just one. I love the way you say bastard. It's got a nice tombra. Bastard. <laughs> Great. Go on, let, let's see you say it for comparison. Are we really doing this? Okay, fine. Bastard. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a bit thin. Sorry. John. Good to see you. And who is this we have with us? Oh, hi, Doctor. Yeah, th uh, this is my brother, Jack. Pleased to meet you, Jack. So, how can I help you both? How's your heart, John? My heart? There's nothing wrong with my heart, is there? No, 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 it's, it's not that. It's a bit of a delicate matter. Don't worry. There isn't much you could say which could shock me at this point. I wouldn't be too sure about that. It's something that's affected us both. How do I put this? Um, we've not really been feeling ourselves. And the symptoms started at roughly the same time? You could say that. You'll have to give me a bit more to work with. Well, what do you know about living outside of your own body? You mean like a feeling of disassociation? Not being in control? Yes, exactly. O OK, let's try something different. Hypothetically speaking, would it be possible to inhabit another person's body? And how might one reverse said hypothetical action, hypothetically speaking? 
if you two are on something, I'm afraid the best thing you can do is go home and sleep it off. Right, I'm just going to come out and say it. I'm actually Jack and he's John. Somehow we've swapped bodies and we want to swap back. Fellas, you realise April Fool's Day was months ago. So there's nothing you can do for us? John, come back in two months as we agreed for your regular checkup. Jack, it was nice to meet you. Well, looks like I'm going to have to find a new GP. OK, uh, that bridge. What's next on the list? Ah, a psychologist. Should be interesting. What did the doctor mean when he brought up that thing about your heart? Have you been ill? Well, I had a mild heart attack a few months back. I mean, it sounds worse than it is. Just spent a couple of days in hospital and I just have to watch my cholesterol. Pretty normal, really. It's, it's nothing that serious. Jesus, John, that's about as serious as it gets. Try not to think of it like that. Right, well, look, no more junk food from now on. I'll cook tonight. No, you haven't seen me in the kitchen, have you? I mean, you know, I don't want to brag, but I'm like a culinary wizard. I can't take all the credit. It's the French jeans. You're part French. Well, let's see, I'm half English, quarter Scottish, a third Irish, and an eighth French. Hello. You're both related, is that right? Yeah, we're brothers. OK. Well, nice to meet you both. Before we get started, I'd like to go through the different options we have available today, OK? Sure. So my family therapy package starts at £250 per hour. Bloody daylight robbery! Well, on the bright side, you know where we're going next, don't you? All right, lads. Can I help with anything? Actually, yeah. Go on. All right, listen. Uh, <laughs> sorry, what's your name? Ron. Right, listen, Ron. We have got a little bit of an odd one here, but by the looks of this place, maybe it's right up your street. I'm listening. OK, so the long and the short of it, well, <laughs> we've swapped bodies. Me and him. My next-door neighbour. I know it sounds crazy, but it's actually the truth. Ever heard of anything like this before? Body swapping? OK, he thinks we're mental. That's perfect! Huh? I've read so much about this. You've seen this before? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Seriously? Come on, come to my office. Let's see if we can sort this out. Well, all right. Here, sit yourself down, lads. I'll be with you in a moment. So you've had other people come in here with this same problem before? Uh-huh. Must be more common than we thought. Oh, yeah. The world's definitely not what you think, lads, let me tell you. So, what happens next, then? How's this all work? Right. Like, you must have heard about the secret alien portals that are buried under London. Ah, uh, no. Look, is there some sort of medicine we can take, or...? Ah, oh, mate, you should look it up. Seriously. Everyone knows about it. It's not even a conspiracy at this stage. This is all very fascinating and all, Ron. One second, lads. I'm almost ready. Okay. For God's sake. All right. Uh, and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Curtain, brought to you by Harvey's Razors, the closest killer shave a man can get. Uh, now, before we get into today's topic, remember to share this video with your friends and smash that like button. Okay. 
So today we have two special guests who are here to talk about their tragic tale of how they swapped brains. Jack, John, why don't you introduce yourselves? Okay, they're gone. Well, that's everyone we have booked in. We're going to have to think really hard what our next approach is, Jack. I'm kind of running out of ideas. I've got one. All right, go on. Totally bought into that last guy. I thought that was it. You know? I'm such a mug. Gotta admit, you had me for a moment. Seems like we have to up our game next time, Jack. Yeah. You know, I can't actually remember the last time I went to the pub. Piss off. Don't believe you. You're like the kind of guy who was born in a pub. But you grew up playing the fruit machines, blindfolded, whilst eating pork scratchings, downing warm ale. <laughs> Maybe when I was younger. Unfortunately, not really the best environment for an eight-year-old, is it? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Let's hear it. I mean, not that this is any of my business or anything. Where's Molly's mum? You never mentioned her. Well, the truth is... <sighs> anyway, uh, that's a story for another time. Fair enough. Hey, look. I've got a piano here. You play? Mate, do I play? Okay, I'll continue playing this. You just join in when you want. What is it? I don't know. Just making it up as I go along. Come on, you play the top line, man. Just, just make something up. Yeah, well, I hope we're not pissing everyone off in here. No, no, that's why it's here. Come on. Come on, you got an audience now. Just, just play something. Fine, okay. I'm a little bit rusty, but I'll give it a go. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. You're great at the piano, mate. Absolute legend. Looks like this one's for you. Cheers. Oh, crap. Come over to my place a moment, yeah? Everything okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. We should just uh, just check and see if any of your posters got delivered by mistake. What's this? A bank statement. I'm cleaned out. Ah, 
How am I going to pay for this place without any cash? Without a job? Maybe it's not so bad. Maybe there's something we can do. How much is rent on this place, anyway? Two thousand a month. Could crowdsource it, I suppose. Jesus. For this one-bed place? Well, I guess there's only one thing for it. How long are these boxes going to be here? Until I can afford to put them in storage. That's all right, isn't it? Can I look for your stuff? No. The long and short of it is that one of us needs to get a job. These bills aren't going to sort themselves out. Yeah, no offence, but I'm never going to get another games job if I have to use your CV. 25 years working in the same office. Who'd hire me? Why don't you get your old job back, Dad? Yeah. Shazzy was saying they haven't found anyone to cover your casework. Apply for my old job as Jack. I'll let you write the cover letter. Give it a bit of panache. You're going to have to sort your look out, Dad. No one's going to hire you if you dress like that. Well, he's right. Got to get you spruced up and all dapper. 90% of acing and interviews all about wearing a sharp suit. Shit. Ah, it's all right. <laughs>